Uh, we overreact and we install a huge bureaucracy to run something. Right, install a huge bureaucracy. Have you any idea what's there already? There is already a huge bureaucracy. I mean, the most ridiculous thing Gordon Brown said this week was the, end of the, the age of laissez-faire has come to an end. I mean, laissez-faire. <laughs> we have had no laissez-faire. Everybody knows they're <laughs> over-regulated. Uh, uh, but, to be but, the, but the regulation is completely ineffective. All right, no, no. And Absolutely. I entirely take the general thrust of your film. I think your film is exactly right. Can I just... Although, I, you, you can in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> although, although, actually, I think what Lord Turner has suggested is very good. I'm, I'm really impressed by the recommendations he's made. Diane. You don't, have to look, you don't actually have to have a lot of complicated bureaucratic regulation. There are three underlying principles we lost sight of. One is capital adequacy, insisting that banks have a certain amount of capital. On their balance in, sheet. Right. The Spanish banks have survived this better than anybody just because there were stricter capital adequacy rules. The other thing is separating investment banks, which are kind of casino-type operations, for ordinary retail banking. And the third principle was this, and it used to be the Bank of England's principle. If you're a bank and you make mess up, you go down. It's simple, it's cost effective. On the following Monday, all the other banks clean up their operations. Because we allowed investment banking and hedge funds to be tied up with ordinary retail banking, the taxpayer had to pump all this money Interestingly, in. Interestingly, Lord Those Turner doesn't propose things. that. Those doesn't. are simple things. But most of what you've just said didn't happen under Labour. Uh, so uh, why would we think now that they'll get it right, since their regulations failed uh, since 97 to do the right thing, according to you, why would they get the regulation right now? Well, first of all, I'm saying that the regulation, it's not complex things, we need just some very simple things. Will they get it right now? Of course. The trouble with the Lord <laughs> Turners of this world is they can write a good report, he's got an academic bent, but he's the institutions which control banks, which was the Bank of England uh, until a few years ago, uh, it was taken away from them, so you've now got yes. a, theor a theoretical process for regulating an incredibly complex system which needs to be regulated now. Nothing to build on. You're entirely right. And, and I felt much more confident when you had a person like Eddie George, who'd been a banker for his entire life and was the, became the governor of the Bank of England. You felt like he was the sort of guy who was looking at the system. You know, how's the system working and what do things smell That's like? That's true, but also Eddie, was, since then you Eddie was prepared to let banks go, bearings, BCCI, and it worked. Well, why has... I mean, for most of our lives, there was a separation. Custom and practice in this country, legal in the United States, between retail banking, like the Royal Bank of Scotland, and investment banking, like Goldman Sachs. Now, why has Turner not proposed a return to that? Why is that not part of the Labour mantra? I, I'm, I honestly don't know, and I think, it's one of the I think that's been one of the fundamental problems. I think probably it's lobbying from bankers, because the thing is, New Labour's infatuated with bankers. Well, and still you a uh, well, but you're, to you're listening to bankers? Clearly not. One, clearly of the, one of the not. things that will happen is, you know, whatever you think of this report, and I think it's probably quite sensible, although I don't understand this point about not separating the different sorts of bank, but it's probably quite sensible. Whatever is proposed, the government will almost certainly do something different and will almost certainly do something more. And this is where the danger comes. So they won't get rid of all the ineffective regulation that we've had for the last 10 years. They'll probably do much of what Turner says and they'll do a great deal more on top. And that is where the danger lies, the dangers that the you identify. The gesture, po politics, aspect Absolutely. of regulation. I mean, that's what you're worried about, that it will overreact and overcomplicate. Yes. In the pub trade, they took away power from magistrates gave it to local authorities, cost our company four million quid, lots of new regulations, but you could appeal from local authorities. Do you know who you could appeal to? The magistrates. <laughs> How, can you ever give an example, uh, Diane, of where Gordon Brown has taken something quite simple and made it simpler? <laughs> You're taxing me and it's late at night. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. He's taxing us as well. Yeah. I mean, you, the, the likelihood is that whatever is proposed will end up ten times more complicated. Yes. I mean, as you know, there are all sorts of schemes that have been introduced since the beginning of the slump, uh, which have not actually seen the light of day because they are so complicated that even the civil servants have not yet been able to put them into action. And David Cameron listed in the House this week, you know, maybe four or five different schemes that actually haven't taken off.
Here's a fundamental, I don't, no one's going to argue the need for regulation. You can argue exactly what the regulation should be. And I, very few, even Tim isn't saying we will have to have more regulation than we had before. Well, certainly different. Uh, certainly different. But here's a systemic problem that almost all regulation faces in every field is it almost always tries to regulate yesterday's problem. Mm. That is true. But I, I think it's quite straightforward things like capital adequacies are yesterday's problem today. No, that's an old tomorrow. regulation that wasn't was allowed yeah. to really go into I mean, just, just to pick disrepute, up, which Just to wrong. pick up Diane's point about uh, Spain, uh, I was at a meeting where the deputy governor of the Bank of Spain was president. We said, well, how come you regulate your bank travel? And he said, I'm really embarrassed to say this. It is so simple. You know, we had these rules on capital adequacy and so on, and we had 26 in, uh, inspectors living in every bank. Yeah. You very, see, very simple. The thing that, that puzzles me is that Gordon Brown's making a big deal of regulation at the moment, but given that other than Wall Street, London was the centre of the biggest failure of regulation, if you were sitting in Bonn or Paris or Rome or Tokyo or Moscow, why would you listen to anybody from here? Moscow? I don't think, you, I don't think they will. I think with uh, uh, projected today by one authority... Two hundred billion pounds of public sector borrowing deficit next year or the year after, it would be a disrespect to a banana republic to say Britain's <laughs> become a banana republic. So we really are in deep trouble now. And if they listen to us, they're mad. What do you say to that, Diane? I think Gordon Brown is a man of huge sagacity and wisdom, and I'm sure the world is listening even as we speak. <laughs> Yeah, but is it taking any notice? <laughs> that I can't answer to. I mean, the danger in all this, and you get this whether it's a Labour government or a Conservative government, is that there is public anger. It has to be assuaged. The public is rightly angry. And regulation almost becomes a form of revenge. It becomes a gesture of politics. Certainly the stuff about bankers' bonuses is That's a form... Sure I mean, I. Th I th <laughs> really? How could that be? <laughs> Certainly the stuff about bankers' bonuses, although I'd happily shoot them. I don't have a problem with that. But it doesn't get to the fundamental issue. Well, let me ask you what the fundamental issue is. Is, is, is the City of London permanently damaged by what's happened? Or can it recover and be the great financial capital it was? The global capital? In a way, it doesn't deserve ever to be the great global capital again, but it has a lot of things.